What's up everyone, June with the Sushi Man, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to make a simple, classic, and one of my personal favorite sushi rolls, and that is Negihama. Negi is Japanese for scallions or green onions, and Hama is short for Hamachi, also known as yellowtail or Japanese amberjack. The rich, buttery flavor of the Hamachi and the slightly spicy, crunchy texture of the green onions work in perfect harmony to make each bite an absolute delight. It's great for beginners and sushi enthusiasts, making it a crowd pleaser and one that you won't regret learning how to make. All right, without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, let's start off with our ingredients. First, we have the hamachi, and we'll only be using about four ounces of this. Now, majority of the hamachi around the world is farm-raised and most likely frozen at some stage, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Farm-raised fish reduces the chance of parasites tremendously, and same goes for it being frozen. Now that said, not all farms are equal, so when looking for hamachi, try to find one that is sustainably farmed and HACCP certified. Like the hamachi that I'm using today is from a company called Uogashi, and if you look over here in this corner, you'll see this label that says HACCP certified. Now, if you're buying from a market and the hamachi is already cut down into smaller fillets, then that's fine, as long as it's a trusted place. I mean, if it seems sketchy for any reason, then don't risk it. Use your best judgment. Okay, moving on, we have about one to two green onions. And this depends on if you want to use the white part or not. I like to just cut the whole thing, so I'll probably only need one of these. But if you're just using the green part, then you'll most likely need two. And then some nori, which is dried seaweed. And these are half sheets. And then of course, some sushi rice. We're only going to need about one cup of cooked rice to make these two rolls, but it's kind of tough to just cook that amount. So I say cook a little more and make more sushi, but it's totally up to you. And if you don't know how to make sushi rice, then check out my video with the link right over here. Now that's it to make the roll itself, but you can't have sushi without some wasabi, ginger, and soy sauce, right? So make sure you have those as well. All right, now let's prep our negihama mix. So first let's chop up our green onion. And I've already cut the end and cleaned this. And basically we're just going to cut this crosswise as thin as we can. And there we go. Now we're just going to put this in our mixing bowl and then we're going to leave it aside. All right, now for the hamachi. So I'm going to cut about four slices, which equates to about four ounces. And if you have some edge parts that you can't use for nigiri or sashimi, this is a perfect time to utilize it since we're going to be mincing it all up anyways. All right, so now we're gonna chop this up and not so much down to a paste, but pretty close. And by mincing this, it brings out the fatty oils of the hamachi, which gives it that smooth buttery texture and flavor. All right, that looks good about there. And now we're gonna add this into our bowl of green onion and mix it nice and even. And there we go. Now we're ready to start rolling. So first let's make sure we have all the tools and ingredients in place. So I have the sushi rice, a bowl of cold water or tezu, my cutting board, makisu, which is the bamboo rolling mat. And we don't need to wrap this in plastic since negihama is rolled in the hosomaki style where the seaweed is on the outside. Now, if what I'm saying right now doesn't make any sense, then you might wanna watch my original how to roll sushi video where I go over all the different styles of rolling sushi. Doesn't have to be now though. Okay, and then we have our negihama mix, the nori, our knife of course. And I always like to have a clean, damp kitchen towel nearby. And that's about it. So we'll start by placing our makisu on our cutting board with the lines running horizontally and also the flat side facing up. And your makisu may not have a flat side to it, which is fine. If it doesn't, then it doesn't really matter which side you use. Now place a shita nori on top of the makisu with the rough side facing up. Then we wet both hands with the water and spread it around a bit, just on the fingers and palms. You don't want the water to be dripping though, just enough where it's shiny like this. Now grab a ball of rice, about the size of a lemon. 
And then we're going to place it on the nori, but we want to leave about an inch on the top and about a half an inch at the bottom where there's no rice. This will make it easier to roll and have a cleaner finish. And you want to spread it all the way across from one end to the other. All right, from here, I like to make a little trench right down the middle all the way across. So you want to use your fingers and just gently push down on it. And this is where the negihama mix will go in. And try not to overdo it here. Too much of the mix and the roll won't close properly and it'll look sloppy. So right about there should be fine. And now we're going to wrap the seaweed and rice around the negihama mix by bringing this bottom part of the nori to this top part of the rice. And we want to use the makisu while we do this. So support the bottom of the nori and the makisu with your thumbs, and then while bringing that up, use your forefingers to help tuck in the negihama mix inside the roll. And at this point, the rice and negihama should be completely wrapped, but the top part of the nori will still be visible. From here, I like to gently apply some pressure and also pull this top part of the makisu away from you to help tighten the roll. And then now take this bottom end of the makisu and continue rolling. Then apply some gentle pressure again from the top and sides. After that, you just unwrap the makisu, and if done correctly, you should have yourself a nice hosomaki. And if not, that's okay, just keep trying. Practice makes perfect. And you can also do some final shaping with the makisu here if you need. Now from here, we just cut this down and basically we're ready to plate. So hosomaki style rolls are traditionally cut into six pieces. So the easiest way to do this is to first cut it right in half and then put them together and then cut it into thirds. And it helps here to wet the knife a bit so that the rice doesn't stick to it. So right down the center in half. And now bring the two halves together. And if you need to wet the knife again, that's totally fine. And now we're going to cut this into thirds. And it's simple as that. Now we'll put these on a plate, add some wasabi and ginger on the side, and we're pretty much done. And there you have it. Simple and traditional negihama maki. And this is definitely the way to go. Some restaurants will serve their negihama without chopping up the hamachi, and it's just not the same. Yeah, it saves time and it's much easier that way, but the extra step of mincing the hamachi is what makes the roll special. So do not skip that part. And if you guys enjoy tutorials like this and want to learn more on how to make sushi, then be sure to check out my book, How to Make Sushi at Home, A Fundamental Guide for Beginners and Beyond. This exact recipe is in there along with tons more. Not only that, but I go through everything sushi related, from how to source the fish, the right tools to use, how to make rolls, nigiri, gunkan, temari, chirashi, I mean, it's all in there. So whether you're an aspiring sushi chef or the home cook that wants to take your culinary skill to the next level, this book is for you. I'll have links below for those that are interested. And now that you know how to make traditional hosomaki style rolls, go learn how to make uramaki or inside out rolls by going to this video right over here. All right, that's about it for me. I know this is a quick and simple one, but let me know if you guys want to see more content like this. And of course, feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Arigatou gozaimasu.